Do you know, know what the public distribution system is in India? One of the very key, in fact, the most key functions of the Food and Agricultural Ministry. I mean, based on um, uh, you know inadequate or badly run PDS in one year or the other, governments are brought down or brought up. It is basically our food security measure. And in these days, because of digitizing, uh, I mean, I won't say these days, really, because of digitizing and bringing everything into the uh, electronic world or realm, PDS has also become EPDS. So basically, the public distribution system ensures that essential food grains, sugar, kerosene, reaches to the deservingly needy via a network of more than 500,000 ration shops in the country. With EPDS, the advantages are, as you can see, innumerable. We can do away with middlemen, siphoning any leakages, and hopefully black market dealing. These are all directly going to benefit the end user. So do you think this was easy? This, by the way, comes under our e-governance initiatives. Okay. So Andhra Pradesh engineered and piloted and pioneered this finest example of e-governance. When the engineers, you know, the scientists were working on this particular system, the challenges were many. Disaster recovery, security controls, continuously upgrading the performance. For example, if you are able to reach, uh, uh, you know, 20,000 or uh, 50,000 persons, you want to be able to reach 1 lakh because there are that many. And finally, flawless implementation. The result we see today, and it is something remarkable, this particular uh, PDS model in Andhra Pradesh, I am sure it is you know, being emulated all over the country by many other uh, states. It has resulted in not just scalable, but a hyper-scalable, reliable, and more important, available to all talukas, an available process of delivery in the state. Clearly, you can imagine how much customization, modification would have been undertaken. You can imagine what the outlay or the budget or the costing would have been for people, uh, I mean for the um, uh, government departments to be able to purchase the adequate software and so on. Clearly, this program is successful because it is powered by an open source database management system post GreeSQL. This has really made the final release outstanding. What do we see on a real basis? I am not going to get into you know, the technical details. I am not even qualified to do that. But in real time, we are seeing that across the 13 districts of Andhra Pradesh, at times, there are more, on a peak day, more than 4 million end users being served. Getting their rations on time. And everything being linked to their, uh, you know, own uh, user identity. So, really, the other decision that was taken... What will be the stack that will be used on which this database management system can be operated from? Again, Linux was the best choice. So Linux is the open source software platform for our children here also. I need to explain, just like Windows, but coming in open source. So um, transparency, Efficiency, effectiveness. And 
this has set the tone for a lot of such initiatives to come in e-governance. In fact, uh, Government of India has taken for e-governance, you know, released a policy statement way back, right in 2012 and 13 itself. All of this started in terms of any government body, any government department at the center of the state will first rule out all open source options available before they went in for a commercial option. And, uh, you know, uh, Madam also mentioned about the United Nations. We are not very far from UNESCO's Millennium Definition Goals as pathways to sustainability. Because if you are going to go for licensed software and your, uh, uh, you know, time runs out and you have to pay for licensing, then, uh, you know, what was sustainable? Another word for sustainable, an easy way to understand sustainable is permanent. Always there. You know, always doing what it's supposed to do. That particular effort or initiative. So, the cornerstones per the UNESCO guidelines are also related to universal access to information and knowledge. That is the key to economic and social development in a sustainable manner. Clearly, possible majorly through ICT, information communication technology. And when we are talking ICT, we are talking IT or software. Anywhere, whenever we talk about any information being handled, the standards should be, again, we cannot overuse the word open, interoperable and non-discriminated, available to all, rural, urban, semi-rural, semi-urban, uh, you know, all the uh, districts, all the uh, states, all the regions of the country, everywhere. And if you are going to be able, this is not easy, this is a tall order, maybe even advanced countries do not have uh, with, you know, uh, far smaller populations and, you know, complexities as we have in our state of the nation, maybe finding it difficult to have this level of an outreach of information. But this is the aim that we, this is the standard that we should always work upon. Is everybody getting the access? Is everybody knowledgeable of everything? You know, that should be the basic uh, uh, principle. And that is the only way which, through which good governance can happen and in addition we talked about this uh, you know customizing and uh, uh, making you know this EPDS system in Andhra Pradesh where uh, uh, as part of the whole process you know uh, when I was reading the case study I literally had tears in my eyes look at what people are capable of because a lot of the system design inputs came from the villagers came from the actual end users thriving on their ration cards dependent on, you know, the Russians that they were, you know, entitled to be able to get. So uh, this is, you know, uh, with all kinds of knowledge and information made available to all, we can actually see the creation and the thriving of knowledge societies. Again, uh, I mean, there is such an eminent group of teachers here, faculty, directors, but for the benefit of our children, typical software concepts, when we talk about, uh, you know, commercial software, we have a license agreement, cannot distribute, so many nots, no, cannot, 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 cannot distribute, cannot modify, cannot gather knowledge about the functioning, but we paid a lot of money, did we really purchase anything? And is there an alternative? You bet there is. Free and open source software. Free, not so much as in free of cost, but very, very manageable, nominal, one-time cost, you can say, just to install and so on. The free word basically pertaining to the free availability of the source code. So every software has its source code. And that is incredibly important for development and modification. So F-O-S-S or FOSS. So all of you must remember that.
and uh, uh, you know going back to our program the spoken tutorial program uh, spoken is audio video so don't confuse it with uh, english spoken english or something and tutorial is a teacher or a tutor that makes classroom instruction or what you learn from your textbooks and notes and lectures much easier and much more hands on and applied manner you can understand so you learn theory but maybe about c programming and actually you learn how to write a few lines of code by going through our practical hands on tutorials and this program to spoken tutorial was started in 2009 and this comes under the mission on education through ict the N the national mission on education through ict which again started in 2006 so we have been involved the, the you know the flagship program was nptel which i am sure many have heard of wonderful courses that you can access and uh, uh, you know work on and learn from the best lectures Uh, in the country coming from the iits and indian institute of science and you know all eminent places and uh, you know the uh, another uh, the blue chip one of the most successful programs the spoken tutorial training program so uh, when we started it was very clear our principal investigator professor kannan from iit bombay it was very clear we selected it to create these courses using the self learning method distance learning method we heard madam refer to edx also and coursera and you know other courses um this is coming because this is coming from nme ict in 2009 itself it was decided that it will be free of cost and it will be based on open source software because no way no and uh, uh, um, our uh, uh, former president dr apj abdul kalam had also come in a very big way about open source software and made our entire defense machinery our entire defense program starting with the navy into completely open source you know uh, one big reason being security so we started in 2009 uh, in a modest way with just you know two or three courses we had linux we had uh, latex and uh, you know php and scilab and so on and in 2011 uh, we we had some funding in 2011 Uh, i joined the program and i was uh, uh, you know told by uh, professor kanan that we have to that uh, uh, the uh, our funding body which is nme ict expects that you know we uh, you know 2011 june to 2012 we inaugurated our uh, pilot it this had to work only in distance learning so we did a pilot of linux in a small college in alwar rajasthan so the good news is after a week the students learned linux and they cleared an assessment set uh, assessment test and got certificate so the method worked we had some confidence and this was in june 2011 we were told that for our project to be renewed we needed to complete at least 25 workshops till june 2012 so that is roughly you know two workshops in a month through distance learning we had to be sitting in iit bombay not leave the campus and we cannot restrict ourselves to mumbai pune region or something like that but it has to be little uh, widespread so we had uh, 25 is not so easy you know two training programs with huge number of students per month it's not easy can anybody guess in 2012 june one year after we started how many programs we had finished we had to complete 25 any guesses from the group 50 sir said 50 can we go a little bit higher how <laughs> students 75 okay go a bit higher be a little bit ambitious 100 not bad <laughs> we had completed 2500 workshops from kashmir to kanyakumari and gujarat to guwahati and as i speak to you today 10000 students are being trained as i speak with you today <coughs> so this has clearly happened because of community collaboration and partnership 
So typically what would happen? One enthusiastic student like yourselves would be going, uh, you know, would hear about the program and would go to their HOD and say, Sir, ye to uh, bahut sahi lag raha hai or C programming hai, Java hai, hum, hum bhi sikhna chaate hai, Sir, certificate mil raha hai, IIT Bombay se. So, first of all, sir, what will you ask? Sir, you will ask, how much is it cost? Is there anything about the financials? So, the student will say, no, sir, it's free of cost. Let's ask principal sir or principal ma'am. And when they go to the principal, he or she asks the same question. And when they hear it is free of cost, more than free of cost. At your doorstep. Flexible. Anytime, anywhere, any place. Self-learning. You don't even need a domain expert. You don't need an expert or lean on, on Linux or C or anything. Then you can imagine how this program can uh, you know, easily be learned by the students. So I'll give you an example. In, uh, uh, you know, we are partnered with all the major, most of the major state universities in the country. And uh, in Maharashtra, there is a university of Gondwana. So Gondwana is, uh, uh, you know, there is a, there is a town called, uh, district called Garchiroli which is in the news for all the wrong reasons because of Naxalism and Naxalite uh, presence. So um, in Gatchiroli Gondwana University, our best faculty organizer of this program is a senior professor from the Department of English. So teachers just have to be facilitators. They just have to be moderators and they can easily, uh, you know, arrange the batches and train the, ch and you know, just Tell the children to learn. So the students sit in front of systems. Just two hours, they get you know organized a bit. They get some idea. Then they take the course to their hostels or their homes, and they study. They complete it on their own. And those who do not even have computers, they can always come back to the college labs. Colleges have made all of these arrangements so that students are coming at eight thirty in the morning. Uh, many of our courses, you know, I was discussing with, uh, you know, some of the uh, faculty from Chandigarh, Punjab and Haryana are relevant in the syllabus also uh, because, you know, programming languages or open source or, uh, you know, this whole elective uh, concept. So many of the courses 